Go ahead. Baker, how cool was it to win a scepter? Are you angry about <laughs> Um, I think I won it because it was the I was the new guy in the conversation. Um, I had some family members send me the clip, so uh, I'll take it. I appreciate Kyle for awarding me with that. Um, but it was I've definitely uh, been given a hard time around the building for that one. <laughs> yeah. Rashad White uh, credit you for uh, picking up on the, on the Vikings uh, defensive play signals. Is that something that uh, you had a knack for in your career of, of being able to do, or is it something that was new to that, to that game? You know, when it comes down to that, you're always trying to find tendencies of defense. Um, just those in-game adjustments that you're trying to, uh, you know, trying to find those tendencies. And, you know, sometimes it's a little different than others, but um, that was why, like I said, at post-game, it was, it was a chess match there in the first half. We kind of had some, some stall-out drives. They did a very, very good job. I mean, I can't credit Brian Flores enough for, for how they were schemed up against us. So, um, yeah, it took us a little bit to adjust, but, um, yeah, you try and find every advantage possible to win. How much did that help you? Quite a bit. I mean, you keep doing that. You know, you're going to have some folks from the government, you know, pulling into one of those dark vans with guys listen, in the listen, suits and listen, trying to get a job. I know I'm in Tampa, but I'm a Texas Rangers fan, not a Houston Astros fan, so we're not going to condone that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bigger, you talked about the, the stiff arm, and then you had to run on, you know, to get the first down. Um, I know you, you can do it, but, like, is there a part of you, too, that has to be really careful about putting yourself in, in harm's way? Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I think there was there was a run earlier that um, just kind of a scramble on third down, not necessary, just get out of bounds. Now when it comes down to the, the third and shorts, things like that when the game's on the line, different story. But there's definitely um, areas that I can get better. But it's first game, kind of juice is flowing. So, uh, yeah, nothing was the same. Todd was just out here, and he said that you're, you play quarterback, but with an offensive line that's mentality. <laughs> What's your thoughts on that, Um I love football. I mean, it's it's the game of football. It's a physical game. I've always loved it. Love contact. Uh, you can't shy away from it. I think that's how you get hurt. But obviously, like I mentioned, playing quarterback is a little bit different story. So, uh, yeah, definitely want to protect yourself. But it just I always want to be a part of the guys. Uh, there's something about that, just being involved, showing them that I like to get down and dirty with them as well. I know that you're still learning your teammates, and there's only so much you can learn from them when you haven't played a regular season game together. So. What were you able to learn about this group of guys from week one? Uh, I mean, the motto for us is resilience right now. Um, you know, just didn't start pretty at all. We, we left so much on the bone. Um, and just being able to adapt, being resilient, not hitting the panic button by any means, um, just continuing with the plan, staying with it, not shying away from the run game at all. You know, it wasn't going well early, but – we ended the ball with the uh, ended the game with the ball in our hands, and that was very important. That, that's a mentality. That's I mean that's that's a mindset. So um, resilient, tough mentality is, is what I learned about this group. So hopefully we can continue growing and uh, just be better through four quarters as well. So you start the aggressiveness of the offense, like kind of as you mentioned, even when things weren't going your way, when things turned around in the second half, even you know the completion to Godwin to close it out, you could have ran the ball, but no, you went for it to, to close it out. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's that nonstop mentality of uh, doing whatever it takes to win. You know, um, the headline should read that Chris Godwin makes a great catch on third and 10 to, to close the game out. But, um, I mean, that guy was in the trenches blocking Harrison Smith over and over again and then makes the play up with his fingertips to, to close out the game. So um, just it's, it's a mentality, like I said. It's a tough mindset. And those guys that we're able to rely on late in the game when they've been, <laughs> been doing dirty work for a while, that they get rewarded. And uh, those guys are special for a reason. You started 3 of 11 for like 12 yards, right? It was tough it's good stats, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's not good. Um, but on top of this, what, what I would want to say is that, you know, in the past, you may have forced some more stuff, right? You may have, you know, done something that, let me, let me try to rip this here or there. Is, is that experience you've had allowed you to have the kind of patience and resiliency to that? come to play in this game? Yeah, I think between experience and also just trusting the system that Dave's brought in, yeah, 3 of 11, talk about starting from the bottom right there. Um, and just continuing to push forward and, and trust the system, not force it, let the game come to us, knowing how good our defense was playing as well. Don't make mistakes, let the game come, and good things will happen. So just just trust, and, and that's a big factor for our offense. Is If we're going to be a great team, we have to trust the other side of the ball. Sometimes punting the ball is not bad. So in the ball, in a, like a series with the ball in our hands, whether it's a touchdown, kick, or a punt, is always good for us. You told us before, like, you know what you can be in this league, right? You have that confidence, but to be able to exit that game 
um, in Minnesota, one of the most hostile places to play as a winner, and, and to be able to now come home and, and enter this Raymond James Stadium for your week one game as a winner, just what can that do for you? What does that do for you? Uh, the confidence just only builds. You know, you, you always have a one and zero mentality. You know, next game is the most important one. We're focused on that. Uh, but your confidence, your self-confidence, the group as a whole continues to grow. And so, you know, when you come home after a road win like that, uh, we should have a lot of crew love and the fans right there. So it, it'll be fun. Uh, just continue to do the little things right. And like I said, we had a lot of meat left in the bone. So we need to improve. We can't be satisfied with what we did. We'll always take wins, but we need to improve if we want to be, uh, you know, potentially where, where we can imagine. There was so much unknown about the offensive line coming in. They didn't play together in a game during much in the preseason. You had Tristan moving so many different pieces in different places. How impressed were you with the performance, just two uh, holding penalties and the one sack? Yeah, I, I think, I mean, the sack, to, to be honest with you, is on me. Um, they get into a drop eight coverage when they checked when we did. Um, and I just got to take off at a certain point, get down, protect the ball. Um, but yeah, the expectations for that O line compared to how they played, uh, furthest thing from the reality. So, I mean, we knew what they were capable of. We knew what we had going into that game. So, um, really proud of those guys. And they're only going to continue to get better, especially in the run game aspects as well. Speaking of the running game, statistically speaking, not a, a great game for Rashad, but what, what did you think about him getting some of those tough yards? And, and obviously, I think probably the best is yet to come for Rashad in terms of production. But what are your thoughts on him? I think he's an extremely talented guy. Um, I know he's not happy with, with last game um, when it comes to his own stats. But uh, yeah, those are, those are hard, physically earned yards um, that when it came down to it in the end of the game, that's what we needed. It, it wasn't going to be a huge stats game for us. But uh, the, that mentality, that mindset, like I keep mentioning late in the game, th those are the important things. When you're really imposing your will, um, that, that's, that's so vital. So he'll have, he'll have opportunities as the season goes on. Um, and I know he'll take advantage. I mean, I, I respect him. He's a great player, really smart guy. Um, and he's, he's, he's got the very, very bright ceiling. I know you've talked highly of Dave Canales. That was his first time, though, in a regular NFL game. Call of plays. It's hostile environment. Do you believe that that's going to grow? What, what can you tell us about him calling plays for you in that first game? That is not an easy environment or not an easy defense to go up against in your first game, especially when you don't really have uh, – any tape of their pressure packages and all that. I mean, I think the world of Dave uh, and so how he handled that, uh, just calling that game. I think it was tremendous. I know he's hard on himself. He said he was a couple play calls a little bit too far behind when they were adjusting against us. But um, yeah, it's only going to get better. And so we're happy with how it was. We were all on the same page. And so we just need to continue to grow. The executive director for the NFLPA came out today and said that every stadium in the league should go to grass and that the NFL needs to find a way to, to pay for that. What, what are your thoughts just about playing on artificial turf versus real stuff? Um, I mean, it's. I know they always say that the science backs the artificial turf, but grass is more forgiving. It's just plain and simple. Your, your cleats give out a little bit. It's just uh, It's easier on your body. There's a difference when guys practice on turf, and this is league-wide. Anywhere I've been, anybody I've ever been around, if you practice on turf the next, day, the next day, your big guys are sore. Their knees are sore, ankles are sore. It's just harder on your joints, and so it's not as forgiving, um, and that's, that's just the way it is. So it's, I believe in it, too. What went through your mind when you saw or heard about Aaron Rodgers going down after a couple of plays? Um, yeah, my views on it were uh, it's tough. Um, I know just the whole offseason, how, how he carried himself, how he was truly refreshed and ready to get back. It's, it's tough to see. You never want to see a guy go down like that. Um, and through the TV, you could feel the energy change in, in that building. So um, it's tough. Uh, but they, they have a good team. You saw the resilience they had as well. So um, I hate that for Aaron. What concerns you about this Bears defense when you look at them on film? Yeah, um, so schematically, um, it, they're just disciplined. They brought in a lot of new pieces as well to try and help out with the running game and pass rush as well. So um, they have some veteran guys. I mean, you talk about Edmonds and Edwards at linebacker. They bring in two really good guys. And then you have Yannick on the edge as well. So they present their own issues. And then you got some young guys in the secondary that are now going to get a chance to play as long as, uh, as well as Eddie Jackson's a veteran guy that is a true ball hawk. So um, they're the type of team. They want to keep it in front of you uh, or keep it in front of them, make you check it down do the things consistently, and then they'll take advantage if you make a mistake. So for us, it's about staying on track, uh, kind of a similar mindset of what we had in training camp. Just keep moving the chains, continue to take care of the ball, and, and see where we go from there. Okay, thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you.